Hello group, Jeff here. Today's video is going to be a astro surface workflow. I'll show two. And uh, because I like to use PIP to do a lot of the pre-sorting, registration, and centering of the planets, uh, these, uh, I go PIP. I used to go auto stacker and then into Registax. I didn't, uh, because Registax has become so unstable, it hasn't been touched in 10 years. And uh, one of the things I was having trouble with was stacking and uh, the little tweaks that you would make, which I'll show you at the end when I compare the two. Um, I, I just had to find something that was that was uh, going to let me do what Registax did, but in a uh, more stable manner. Now, Astral Surface can do more, much, much more than just planetary work. But for this video, we're only going to concentrate on the on the planetary work. And uh, I will show the first thing I will show is taking a PIP AVI and stacking and then register or doing the wavelets from within astral surface and then the second flow will be coming out of an image coming out of astro stacker into astro service so let's get going the first thing i'll do is get rid of my face and i will open up auto stacker just to show you why i like it uh, one of the things that you can do with stacking programs is a, a function called Drizzle. And Drizzle is making new data inferred from your existing data. So you can scale up in your imagery if you have good data. So in this particular case, the Jupyter data I had was the best ever. And I couldn't use a Barlow because I'm just looking through way too much atmosphere. Uh, so I used a drizzle and drizzle at 1.5 was enough to uh, really help things out. And I, you will see the difference between uh, the non-drizzled uh, image and the drizzled image. So the first thing we will do is open up astro surface and right here is the current version that i'm using and if you want to find out what version is available you would click uh, on the website about website version and we'll, that will tell you right here what's on the website you can see we're matched up i have found that astro surface is regularly updated which is a good thing uh, with today's world and security threats to uh, fix os's regardless of the os they have to make changes and those changes sometimes break software and if the developers aren't on top of that the uh, applications become unstable and that's what's happened to uh, registax so as I said, the first thing we'll do is bring in a PIP animation right here. You can see PIP puts its PIP extension on there. It's an AVI. And uh, I will zoom in one to make it easier to see. And you can see that this is the, what PIP has done is really done an excellent job of centering the data and it's also picked uh, the best data which isn't isn't a bad thing at all so this window shows you what's 
uh, Astro Surface has found out about the data so far and that it's an RGB color, 16 bit. And then on this side is what we can do with the data. So in this particular case, because it's a planet, we only want to register the image. The register DS is deep sky for deep sky stuff. You don't want to do that. You want to register. And you will see that it gives you the order in which to do things with the yellow numbers. So we want to do a disk or surface with detail. And then we want to select detect for the disk or planet. And then over in the image, we want to double click on it. And that selects the area that will receive the most attention by the algorithm. And then I like to have the graph auto open after it does the analyze. So you'll see we have 2,500 frames. So Pip took my original 10,000 frames down to 2,500. And we will analyze these. And it goes through it pretty quick. Now, this would be the same thing that can be done in Registax. Okay, the window that opens here is it, it's giving you information on your data. So the little spikes, the higher it is, the better the data. So we want to grab, we want to drag this up to about there. And then I want to grab maybe a thousand frames or so, about 40%. And I'm going to say OK. And then uh, if I was going to do a global, it would be a mean stacking method. But because I want to actually do a multipoint, we want multipoint, and then the tile size is 32 pixels. That might be a little big, so let's try 28. And then we set them. You'll see over here, it's set the, the pixels, or I'm sorry, the uh, tiles. And now all we need to do is stack it. And when the stack is done, it will open a little window here, and we want to click on Edit, and then select Close It, Yes. Just drag this out of the way. I'll up the size to make it easier to see because this is a 448 by 448 image. And we've just now increased it by 0.4% four times. I'm sorry. So I want to do wavelets. I'm going to hit reset so that you can see how I, I get to my thinking here. Now, to find out what stuff is, you just have to hover on the area of interest. And in this particular case, uh, you'll see that we have the numbers that show you the, the order in which to do things. A deconvolution is of no interest for planetary work. At least I don't think so. It's more for deep sky stuff, so we aren't even going to use this. So I would up my pre-filter, and this reduces artifacts when we're in strong sharpening. So I like to go about 0.5. Then uh, we want to change, or we want to adjust the fine detail wavelets. And we'll start at four. And you'll see that I, I personally think that the strength is too high. So I'm going to bring this down. to 72, and then maybe go up a little more, six, maybe bring this down even more. Fifty-six, that looks good. Now I'll bring up the course detail to four, and maybe bring the strength down a little bit. Let's go to 60. Now this is a small image, so 
uh, you don't want a lot of strength when you're dealing with small data. And I think I can live with this. So now I want to adjust the colors. And that would be a white balance right here. And all you have to do is draw out a box. You'll see the color changes. <clears throat> then I want to align the RGB channels. And you want to draw out another box. Say align. And it's done it. Say OK. <coughs> Excuse me. Next, I want to sharpen this up a little bit. So we're going to go into Sharpen. That's a little too much, maybe. Let's try and knock it down. That's good. We'll say OK. Then I'm going to give it a little saturation. Out there. Maybe add a little brightness to help the top. I'm good with that. So this is one way to uh, take some data, an AVI. I mean, you could come right out of Malincave Sky into this program if you wanted to. Uh, you don't need to go to PIP. I just like PIP because it sorts data so fast. I mean, I did 100,000 frames in PIP <laughs> in 20 minutes. So I can, I can uh, do a lot of work in PIP. And then because PIP did all of the, the hard stuff, when I get into programs like this, or even auto stacker, they don't have as much of they don't have as much work to do and can fly through what they need to do much quicker. So this is a decent looking image. And uh, what I will show you next is how to bring in, we'll close this out. So now I want to bring in a deep sky or an auto stacker drizzled image. So auto stacker, you can see it comes in the same size. It's at 672 by 672. So I've almost, I've gained over what, 120 pixels-ish per axis, X and Y. And that's a lot of data for this scale. And that's about, Depending on the Barlow I would use, I might get a little more data, but I would also get a lot more atmospheric turbulence because I'm looking through so much of the atmosphere at my latitude. So a drizzle works out very well for me. So because this is an image, we can go right into wavelengths. And you can see that it's remembered my last settings. You can load and save settings right here. I'm going to increase some things only because I have more data to work with. And uh, I think I can get away with running this a little hotter. Something like that. We'll leave the rest the same. I will do the same thing. I will go to white balance. Say OK. I will do my RGB align. Say align OK. I will start my sharpening. Maybe bring up this a little bit. That works. Then increase the saturation. Something like that. Maybe a little more brightness. So 
something like that. And that's how you would process your still image data out of a program like AutoStacker. So what I will do now is open up Registax. And I'll load this same image so that the image scale is the same. And these items over in here are these items in here. So the RGB align is align RGB. The RGB balance is white balance. The gamma is gamma. Contrast and brightness are in uh, in here. You have gain for each channel. You can split your RGB channels. Uh, you can remove color noise if you just want to work on that. You can turn your image into a mono image, look black levels, gamma, all kinds of stuff. So the top three sliders in Registack equals one slider in AstroSurface. The bottom three sliders are the course details, and that's also one slider in AstroStacker. So I, these sliders still work for me. I can just drag these up. And you can see the sliders do their thing. But it's when I try to do this stuff that uh, as, uh, Registax starts failing. So I can't even do an RGB align anymore. So with this comparison out of the way, I hope that you uh, can see that the difference between the two programs is, is minimal. And uh, because Astro Surface is something that appears to be updated regularly, uh, we won't have the same problem that uh, we have with Astro or uh, Registax, which hasn't been touched in 10 years. So with that said, if you have any questions, you know where I live, and we'll see you in the group. Thanks.